So this is my Raspberry Pi CCTV camera project. I actually didn't make any of the software. This is actually running, I think it's called Motion Pi OS. But I fully printed the box for mounting on a wall, as you can see. It's not perfect, but it does the job. So before I put it up on a wall, I decided to make a video. So we got infrared LEDs, we got Wi-Fi, and obviously the box. It runs on 12 volt DC adapter. And let's have a look what's inside. So let's have a look inside. So we have power input, which in my case I'm using 12 volt DC input, which then goes to this conversion module, module which basically converts 12 volts or up to actually 24 volt, anything up to 24 volts down to uh, 5 volts. But it actually needs to be adjusted. It can actually do different voltages. In my case, I used voltmeter to adjust it to 5 volts. At the input point, so we got 12 point, uh, volt input, it goes to the module. I actually also attached this connector, which powers the infrared LEDs. This is actually a replacement module for Wi Fi infrared Wi-Fi CCTV cameras. I actually sprayed it with silicon spray to make it waterproof. I haven't tested this. There's at least a waterproofing on it, but hopefully it should work. So obviously this module connects to this connector. And also a good thing about it is since the camera is constantly on, during the daytime and nighttime. We don't want really this infrared light to be on during the daytime. This little module, this little piece of equipment actually will switch on and off the infrared lights based on the light outside. So when it gets too dark, the infrared lights will switch on. When it's daytime, they'll stay off. So, on the output on this module, I soldered this USB connector, which then powers the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has infrared camera connected to it, and also this Wi-Fi USB connector module. This is what the module looks like. If you can see it. And also, just to let you know, Originally, for power, I tried to use one of these, which is supposed to convert 12 volts down to 5 volts, but unfortunately, it failed to boot a Raspberry Pi with a Wi Fi dongle connected to it, so it doesn't give enough power. So that's enough for the inside build. Oh, just before I forgot. Also, all the screws used for the for the casing, I actually bought them on Poundland. So these are the Poundland screws. One pound for this whole box, just to let you know as well. So that's that's enough for the inside of the Raspberry Pi. Let's have a look at the software side of things. So to get the software working. You just need to go to the following link, which I will add in description. For Raspberry Pi Zero, you need to download Motion Pi dash Raspberry Pi dash whichever version you want, and then use the same process you would image your Raspberry Pi SD card, which you can find on the Raspberry Pi website. Once the card is imaged and you boot up your Raspberry Pi, I used USB to Ethernet adapter to connect my Raspberry Pi. Once that is done, you just need to find out what IP address the device picked up. In my case, 
it's this IP address. Actually, it wasn't, but I've set it so it actually pick, it always assigns this IP address to this device. And this is the interface you will be presented with. Then the next step is to enable advanced settings. Let's scroll down to networking. Enable wireless network. Type in your wireless network name and password. So it's as simple as that. You can also set the static IP in here. And this is actually a stream out of my window to the backyard. I think you can also go full screen. Let's switch off the full screen. Let's go back. You can also set up the username and password for your admin user which will be able to make changes and then the user which will be able to view the camera. There are loads and loads of features on this camera so it's actually quite amazing. The software what this guy made is brilliant. And the best thing about this camera it can actually record internally to the SD card. So I probably paid about £30 for my CCTV camera outside which I'm using now and the only thing it does it can actually take a picture and send it to, it, to the email address I provide. With this camera you can actually set all the conditions and then you can actually enable the email or many other things and you can actually store the video captured when there's movement in the camera on the SD card which you can access I think in loads of different ways so you can actually use hmm, look. I think you can use uh, Samba and you can uh, I think you can also, also use uh, FTP, if I'm correct. Let me just have a look through these menus. I know I have used Samba. But yep, you can also use FTP to actually access the video videos on USD card. And I'm sure I've seen somewhere you can actually store your videos in a certain location if you got SMB server running somewhere on your network. So that's it for this video, I will add the um, 3D object box links to the description and I will also add the links for the software to the description. Thanks for watching, bye.